Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, another uh, webinar conducted by our CCI. Uh, at first, on the outside, I'd just like to give thanks to our eminent trustees, which are Dr. Anish Krishna and Dr. Narayan Pradeep. Uh, credit also goes to our uh, CCR webinar in charge, Dr. Vijay Kumar Chennan Chetty. I'd like to also uh, give special thanks to our existing uh, office bearers, Dr. Nar Narendra Metuku and Dr. Ravi Dosi, as well as Dr. Atri Gangopadia. All of you have been very instrumental in uh, maintaining this uh, very high quality educational program, especially during the last couple of years. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity now to welcome uh, our panelists and moderator. So starting with our panelists, we we'll start with Dr. Shivani Swami. Uh, she's a young, uh, talented consultant from Jaipur. She, her areas of interest include respiratory medicine, sleep and allergy. Uh, she's affiliated with Narayan Multi-Specialty Hospital in Jaipur. In 2008, she was awarded the most promising young pulmonologist in Rajasthan. She's an active faculty conducting various workshops at both the state and national level, particularly in sleep medicine. Our second panelist, Dr. Saurabh Mandilwar. He is a consultant chest physician and intensivist affiliated with uh, RN Cooper Hospital and HPT Medical College in Mumbai, amongst other affiliations. His areas of interest include pulmonology and critical care. And he has also been an active speaker and faculty at the state and national level. Welcome. I am Dr. Carl Mehta, I'm consultant pulmonologist and sleep specialist at Malia Hospital in Bangalore. My areas, areas of interest include pulmonology, critical care, and sleep medicine. I'm currently a World Sleep Society International Sleep Research Training Fellow uh, of the class of two, 2022. Um, and I've also been an active speaker, particularly at the state level. Uh, Dr. Ramesh Bharate, he is a senior consultant and pulmonologist um, based out of Latur. He's associated with Gayatri Super Specialty Hospital in Latur, as well as professor in HGRD at uh, GMC Medical College in uh, Latur. He is a prolific speaker and teacher. He is uh, very well versed with international, international pulmonology and critical care procedures. He is also an active senior faculty and speaker at both state and national level. Welcome, sir. And finally, uh, coming to our moderator, it uh, gives me great pleasure and thanks to welcome uh, Dr. Rakesh Chavla. He's a senior consultant uh, and uh, chairman of the Department of Respiratory Medicine, Critical Care, Sleep Medicine, and Interventional Pulmonology at Saroj Super Specialty Hospital. Also, uh, he has affiliations with Jaipur Golden Hospital and Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute in Delhi. Uh, so as the chairman of the Pulmonary Foundation, he's the past chairman of Rare, uh, Rare Airways Lung and Pura uh, 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 Society. And he's also chairman of the North Zone Indian Chess Society, member of the governing council of the National College of Chess Physicians India member of the governing council of Indian uh, College of Allergy and Applied Immunology. Sir has various other notable affiliations. Uh, he, he also is a recipient of an appreciation award from our late Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. He's also a recipient of the OA Sharma and RC Jain uh, Oration Awards. And he's also an author, is an author of various guidelines Related respiratory medicine published very more than 78 plus articles and has authored uh, four, four book chapters. I would like to welcome Dr. Rakesh Chavla uh, and thank him for his esteemed presence today. And we look forward to a very engaging and enlightening session. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Welcome to today's webinar of CCI. At the outset, I am thankful to the CCI founder president, Dr. Krishna, 
secretary dr ravi dosi webinar and dr vijay chinma chetty for the opportunity i got on this platform to be in front of you i am thankful for the love and the affection the way it has been extended to me to present the webinar to all dr krishna dr ravi and dr vijay I promise the audience in this sleep webinar I will not let you sleep. I will give overview of sleep we are going to discuss and the content I am going to give in this slide presentation is what I cannot discuss during the discussion. I am sure you will enjoy the the talk and then the panel discussion. The whole panel discussion is based on american academy of sleep medicine nice and our indian guidelines inosa what we are going to discuss today from ancient times we know ramayana character from kumbhakarna who known to sleep for 6 months and was a heavy snorer his built his body was typical patient of osa and snoring so it is not that we know now and the sleep medicine has developed into a science it is thousand of years before even in treta yug the disease was recognized and we if we go to the literature i am sure they must have found the treatment at that time you see this patient sleeping and if you are able to appreciate the sound of snoring do not laugh at vips who nod off in meetings or kids caught napping in the class they could be suffering from serious sleep disorder this is what happens if the patient is a snorer and sleep apneic you can see your vips in the parliament why sleep apnea and snoring is not going to go away the most important is the food habits and our all junk food being promoted right and left in time magazine the new science of sleep has been recognized that it is a a, a disease and we have to be careful normal sleep and functions we are going to take up in panel discussion so today's topic is the panel discussion on snoring and sleep disorders snore more than an acoustic nuisance sleep and watchfulness both of them when immoderate they constitute disease and you know what happens to the partner when the husband is snoring or the wife is snoring blessings on him who invented sleep it makes a shepherd equal to monarch and the fool to the wise there is one evil in this it resembles death since between a dead man and a sleeping man there is but little difference difference between snoring and sleep apnea we are going to take up when you are sitting in a clinic the typical thick chubby short statured short neck is walking in your clinic you know what far he is coming and i am telling you it is a very ill hitting science the results are fantastic it is like when you remove in the middle of the night a peanut from a neonate or a small child in the winter some in the winters at 2 am the smile you share on the mother's face is the same you get when you treat sleep apnea and the patient who praises whose life has changed very interesting a case in which we were doing a sleep study the person who has brought him will vouch that 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 he doesn't have anything he could not resist his sleep and in front of the bathroom door he has gone to sleep so the beauty is the partner or somebody who is witnessing his sleep you can see this is the bathroom door where he is sleeping he could not and you can see him sleeping there when the sleep study was on another another patient interesting patient of morbid obesity delhi university professor having all comorbid conditions this developed in last 5 to 6 years 
the, the interesting thing is two people will lift this stomach and she will weigh herself first. The ambassador will weigh. Then she will be in the car and the total weight will come. So we were asked to do the things and she was given CPAP. Unfortunately, she is no more, but she had all the complications of obesity and sleep apnea. OSA. We know the type of sleep disorders, breathing, apnea, hypoapnea, central apneas, mixed apneas, complex apnea. We are going to take up in our panel discussion. This is you can appreciate when you are reading the epoch of the polysomnograph readings. This is how the obstructive sleep apnea happens. This is how the central sleep apnea looks like. This is how the mixed apneas will look like. This is how the hypoventilate, the hypoapneas will look like. This is how you will get the respiratory arousals with the ventilatory efforts. Typical pathophysiology, a normal air is passing through the posterior airways and when these etiopathogenesis happens in the blockage and you get hypoxia, you get hypercarbia and you get ventilatory efforts and you are arousals from the sleep. This happens so much time in the going to take up pathophysiology in our discussion. Typical photograph to explain to the patient when he comes for sleep study, what happens. Classification of disorders, we know dysomnias, parasomnias, psychiatric sleep disorders and the proposed sleep. This is the international classification of sleep disorders. The major of our sleep are in dysomnias like obstructive sleep apnea, central sleep apnea. So your main, 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 which is related with the pulmonologist are included in this. <laughs> then narcolepsy, just see a beautiful video and you will know what narcolepsy is and the patient has gone suddenly. Right. So, and, and he recovers back. You see what happens in cataplexy. Suddenly the muscle tone is gone. Right. So, so the people around him know that he is going to recover. There is no panicky. Periodic limb disorders. Beautiful video that I'm going to show you because I cannot show them in the panel discussion. Then you watch them carefully. Then how these limb movements happen when the polysomnography is being recorded. And you can see these limb movements. Restless leg syndrome. We are going to take up if our time will permit. But you see what happens in, in the rest leg syndrome. Various presentations of massaging the legs, the flexion of the legs, and, and the movements of the leg repeatedly in night during sleep. And you can see here, you can see how the legs have been moving, how he himself with the body is shaking, and these are all during sleep. Patient doesn't know. Parasomnia. You have sleep starts, you have sleep talking, you have sleep terrors, you have sleep paralysis. I'm going to share with you a few videos. Confusional arousals, patient will get up, and this is the epoch of the PSG recording. This is what happens when the patient gets up and has a confusional arousal. You see the nocturnal paroxysmal dystonia of the foot and the leg. To reduce the chest, you see what time, happens in sleep walking. He is in sleep, late. coming and is gone. And going to sleep. Right. Night terrors. See how one gets up in sleep and is terrified and you can see the different facial expressions. Sleep paralysis, a photograph which everyone must have seen before. You see the head banging in sleep. You see the sleep talking. I'm sure you will be enjoying these lucid videos and most of you have never seen them. Myoclonus. This is all when PSC is being going on. Now, what are the consequences? If you, most of you must have seen the movie Collateral Damage. So what happens? 
इफ यू लीव ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव स्लीप एपनिया अनट्रीटेड और स्लीप डिसऑर्डर्स अनट्रीटेड देयर इज गोइंग टू बी ए कोलेक्ट्रल डैमेज एंड विच वी विल डिस्कस इन अवर पैनल डिस्कशन हाउ यू डायग्नोज डायग्नोज यू हैव टू एग्जामिन द ओरोफेरिक्स and and you know it is class 4 melampathy score you know as a patient to open the mouth and you know this patient has got obstructive sleep apnea and when psg is done you are able to associate it sleep disorders you can diagnose we are equipped with since the things are available we have an ls5 we have the pdx and and we have the level 3 the portable sleep labs now what i had before in 1996 97 98 we used to do it on auto set first time in delhi i started doing these sleep studies which were level 3 at that time which are with the small small gadgets which are hanged around the neck so it has to be an overnight sleep study monitored and this is a kind of a monitor the things were going on and we were able to record the apneas and hypoapneas and give the reading now you see how difficult it is for a person who is undergoing polysomnography to get the sleep study done what is the treatment gold standard non surgical and surgical detail is going to be in a panel discussion we know behavioral modification is very very important we have to say no to drinks no to smoking no to junk food we we have to have our normal rituals to reduce the weight and follow them then we have a cpap we have surgeries we have dental appliances what is a cpap it's a magic box in sydney it was invented in 1981 by colin sullivan i got training in 1996 with colin sullivan in his lab in royal prince alfred hospital sydney so this is the article and how the cpap helps to keep the airways open interface very very important we are going to take up in panel discussion the issues with the interface different types of pap therapy available of different types different companies different machines the algorithms may be different we are going to discuss the cflex we are going to discuss a pap is a kind of a silencer which is fixed on the nose of the patient and the lady is happy patient is happy and they are getting a sound sleep most expensive to the least one are available cpaps in the market this is how it used to look like and it used to come with the name of sullivan elite in 1996 97 this was a cpap which was available most of you have not seen it i am sure but i am very happy for the enthusiasm of the younger generation now you see this patient is on cpap sleeping comfortably very nice no issues now the wife says i don't want to have a ganesha in the bed or if you take it as a hose pipe he has to be worshiped in the temple or she she doesn't like then what is the answer the straight refusal i don't want you say gold standard i say no i don't want to use cpap okay then what if magic box fails or the patient refuses you have non surgical options you have surgical option again they are going to come in a panel discussion provent sleep apnea device right it is a one way valve disposable used to avoid snoring and sleep apnea by generating the epap pressure into the lungs this is how they look like then there are the electronic tennis balls this is come with the name of the night shift that it it vibrates and helps you to rotate the moment you have a snoring and a sleep apnea this is a charging station and this is a usb port you can download even the report soft silicon nasal devices they are available they are effective oral appliances they are mandibular advancement tongue retainers these are the mandibular advancement devices snorex repositioning device snore guard now you can see all of them visible in one picture and these are the tongue retainers they will pick up the tongue so that it doesn't fall back and doesn't lead to apnea surgical options 
hypoglossal nerve stimulation in obstructive sleep apnea the stimulation of the hypoglossal nerve improves upper airway potency by stimulation of the genioglossus muscle resulting in protrusion of the tongue and several companies have developed hypoglossal nerve stimulation device it is like a pacemaker under the skin and the hypoglossal nerve the another uh, stimulator wire is fixed it is under the skin a small surgery and the implantment of stimulation of hypoglossal nerve is placed surgery there are three major regions nasal cavity retropalatal and retrolingual are the areas where obstruction happens so before opting for surgery you have to have a correct analysis when doing all kind of measurements and through promotric data to see where the surgery should be done now what is the the maxillomandibular advancement surgery have a beautiful way this is the constricted airway this is the normal airway what exactly is done in this surgery the beautiful animation if you see you will have an idea but patients don't get agree at least in my country for this kind of an extensive surgery where the mandible is advanced and the surgery is done the chin is lifted up and the posterior airway is 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 opened they are screwed and things are done to maintain the airway so that the sleep apnea and the 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 snoring disappears you can see by doing this advancement yeah, you are able to do a good job then there are surgical managements of ent procedures which are done by the ent specialist i'm just going to give you view we can discuss these are rhinological procedures which is endoscopic septoplasty we call it as dns repair then there is a tonsillectomy which is done to remove the tonsils and obstructions especially in the children's then adenoids again responsible witnessed apneas in the children's doing the adenoidectomy then the most common uvulopalatopharyngeoplasty done if you see the animation it is beautiful the whole of the soft palate and uvula is is removed so that the potency of the airway is maintained it is a laser assisted procedures which is done routinely by the ent specialist by removing and debulking i told you one by one this then this and and then this uvula is removed and it is all flat then there are tongue base suspension to reduce the falling back of the tongue this is how the base of the tongue is is reduced by placing the 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 implants into the base of the tongue so that the base is reduced and you are able to reduce the size of the tongue it will retract anteriorly and the space is increased radio frequency ablation is again an an accepted device we don't have hair with us so by doing this you are generating a fibrosis and the tongue is forward and the space is created on the back placement of implants or the pillar procedures for snoring here you are able to place the pillars in the soft palate and you are able to see the things and placements of implants are done this is how they are being placed you can see one two and three they will be placed and and this tongue will be back and the space will be increased posteriorly now we know this obesity morbid obesity bariatric surgery is accepted norm of the day where are complications any part of the body is involved as a medical complication of obesity so we need to address the issue why operate there are various health risks from hypertension to heart failure related with obesity various surgery is done are the gastric banding vertical banded gastroplasty as a pulmonologist you must know we know 
that we are not doing it when the patient is refusing certain modalities they should be given an option vertical gastrectomy bilopancreatic diversion commonest operation done is the rowan y gastric bypass where the direct the meal is going into the uh, small intestine and is being uh, digested the stomach is bypass this is what is a gastric bypass rowan y Surgical management provides effective management of OSA can be safely performed in most patients with proper pro preoperative preparations significant perioperative risk in some patients surgery should be considered for patients unable to utilize non surgical management we know we will be concluding our session in our panel discussion we are going to give recommendations to government of india based on these photographs and you know it's a serious problem the cci i am sure should be participating now to newly formed an uh, nmc the suggestions to include into the syllabus of mbbs and to the selection process we will discuss in our panel discussion should be given the and, and so that the so many lives can be saved of the people sleep better feel better and increase your energy 150% by banishing your snoring problems keep calm and trust cpa thank you very much have pleasant dreams now after this we are going to have a panel discussion thank you very much i hope you have enjoyed thank you okay thank you very much so i i have the youngster the youngster generation the panel and i must congratulate you some disturbance with somebody we have our panelist from north east west or thank you very much for your humble introduction i am very thankful to you so i think sleep is a very dynamic topic and we kick start the discussion definitely you have enjoyed the talk from basics to the advanced whatever time we have we will like to address the questions of the audience and we will have a discussion with our panelists so i will invite carl to speak what do you mean by a normal sleep and why we need it so good evening sir thank you very much um so normal sleep is something that is very essential because uh, it helps us uh, prepare for the next day and the daily activities helps in replenish our energy stores during that uh, point in the night especially during the phase of rem sleep and uh, it uh, that's important so uh, it's very important to maintain a proper sleep wake uh, cycle proper hygiene so that you are prepared your energy levels are up to take care of the tasks for the next day correct so it's a basic human need to live right so so yes. it rejuvenates it rejuvenates it is natural and we have to have a sleep i i will request ramesh to to speak about when when we are doing the sleep analysis sleep physiology is very very important to know about the stages of sleep so they say it's a rem disorder it is non rem disorder it this stage the patient has a problem this stage patient has a problem i will just like you to speak about what is this staging of sleep ramesh you switch on your mic you are mute 
good evening everybody uh, uh, sleep is a sleep is nothing but a state of unconsciousness where uh, yeah, the person can be aroused by uh, any stimuli uh, sleep ha- uh, sleep has been uh, broadly classified in two categories uh, nrem nrem and rem sleep and it has five stages awake n1 n2 n3 and uh, rem sleep so uh, each cycle lasts for 90 minutes and uh, a healthy person uh, is having uh, five to six cycles in 24 hours wonderful so what do you think how many hours of the sleep is good enough for an adult and for a child so uh, for a uh, uh, adult seven to eight hours sleep is enough and in uh, as uh, in uh, newborn newborn babies uh, 16 to 18 hours sleep is common as the age advances in children up to three to five years it is up to 10 hours and uh, from 13 to 18 years it is up to eight to eight to ten years so correct so we the as the age grows the duration and amount of sleep required is less so yeah. the more older you are the less number of hours of sleep you know need correct so from this little basic introduction we are coming to our topic of sleep disorders so it's very very important pulmonologist it is snoring it is sleep apnea it is narcolepsy it is restless leg syndrome it is obesity hypoventilation syndrome so these are the topics which we are going to touch because there are sleep disorders to the neurological perspective a neurologist perspective then there are psychiatric perspective the sleep disorder so we being pulmonologist what we come across we are going to dic- discuss today so saurabh what do you think what is this snoring and how it happens you are mute saurabh uh, good evening everyone so um... As you, we all know, snoring is a actually noisy breathing while we sleep. It happens when our air cannot flow freely through the airways as you breathe in and uh, out during sleep. When the airway is narrowed or partially blocked, breathing causes, uh, this type of breathing causes the tissue of upper airway to vibrate, resulting in a sound we all know is snoring. So um, uh, snoring, uh, there could be uh, many causes which we are going to discuss. It could be anatomical cause, various allergies, sinusitis, cold, overweight, even uh, if somebody is sleep deprived, uh, the throat muscles can be uh, deeply uh, relaxed in their sleep and can cause snoring. In children, there are adenoids and tonsils which can cause again snoring. So there are a lot of causes of snoring and snoring, snoring we all know is a, a noisy breathing. Correct. So this is the flutter of the air which passes through the obstructed airways. If you remember your childhood, Coca-Cola or Campa-Cola used to be at that time and Coca-Cola vanished, then Campa-Cola came and now again the Coca-Cola and Pepsi. The glass bottles, the children used to use it as a whistle. Here is a short neck and there is a broad base of these bottles. So this is exactly what happens when from the shorter airway air goes to the lungs this is how the snoring happens it is the flat the, the flutter from the narrow airway of the posterior pharynx to the lungs and this sound is generated what children used to make a whistle through these kind of bottles wonderful so do you think shivani all snoring is pathological or patient has physiological snoring also and does it needs a treatment uh, good evening, sir, and good evening, everybody else. I think that's a great question, and Dr. Saurabh has uh, almost touched upon it already. So not all snoring has to be pathological. Uh, like Dr. Saurabh mentioned, that people who are excessively tired or kids, uh, it can actually be even physiological. At times, even uh, there is positional 
uh, snoring that in a particular position because of leg flexion or some some people might have uh, snoring so not all snoring is pathological however there are various conditions like even acromegaly uh, like kids uh, have uh, adenotonsillar hypertrophy like there can also be craniofacial abnormalities like sir you have already touched upon there can be hypothyroidism which may also be responsible for snoring apart from the common causes the dr saurabh has also already mentioned like nasal congestion or uh, sinusitis and uh, also occasionally people who consume alcohol may also be more prone to snoring because alcohol will also lead to relaxation of the neck muscles correct so all snoring is not pathological there in the physiological snoring but the snoring which is disturbing to the partner that disturbing to the neighborhood disturbing to the person who is sleeping nearby is pathological physiological snoring does not need any treatment so if the patient have come to you with complaint of excessive snoring witness excessive snoring because the patient himself will say ki i sleep very happy i am very comfortable nothing happens to me he will vouch so the dictum is ki you know i don't know in north india tawa you understand if he stands on it hot tawa and says no i don't snore the wife tells you the truth this is what the truth is about this disease which is snoring and sleep apnea before coming to the classification and sleep apnea obesity i want to touch so i want to ask car what do you understand what is this obesity and when you call it morbid and it becomes pathological yes sir so obesity is the excessive accumulation of fat in our body uh whether it's subcutaneous and visceral and uh, the most important marker that we as doctors and clinicians use is uh body mass index which is kg by height in meters squared and uh, so the bmi classification for obesity is anyone with a bmi more than 25 so 25 to 30 you're mildly obese and then uh uh 35 morbidly obese is you're uh, more than 35 with uh, uh comorbidities like diabetes hypertension uh and sub- subsequent and these are the patients who are categorized as morbidly obese so as long as long if you have a bmi of 35 uh, above 35 with uh, uh comorbidities that is uh, considered morbidly obese correct so obesity like covid there is no organ in the body which is left is not affected in covid right you speak of a problem you are facing you are getting a literature you are getting updated every day similarly the obesity also leads to multiple systemic disorders and i have shown you in my video the video before the lady was on cpap it was wonderful to see the size of her stomach i don't know why it did not run there the two people will lift that stomach and she will first dharam kanta you know dharam kanta jahan pe truck tulte hain you know the trucks so the load of the truck first ambassador will weigh then she will be the ambassador and then the total weight minus ambassador will be her weight this was a very very interesting patient who came i am going to discuss with you my experience of plethora of 30 years of practicing sleep i am one of the few in the country who started doing the sleep practices in the private practice in the country so i think you will enjoy what do you feel ramesh now we are coming to our topic of sleep disorders ramesh what do you feel how you classify sleep disorders how you say these the, the, the how we differentiate this is this this is this this is this and we have selected out of them ki pulmonologist part is there in these sleep disorders sir broadly sleep disorders can be uh, can be uh, classified into uh, according uh, acute uh, uh, insomnia psycho psychophysiological insomnia then behavioral uh, insomnia hypersomnolence and then uh, insomnia due to drug addict and then uh, <coughs> uh, non specific or idiopathic insomnia 
and uh, it is related breathing disorders like uh, central sleep apnea syndrome then uh, hypersomnia and uh, sir, uh, circadian rhythm sleep, sleep disorders parasomnia and sleep sleep uh, related movement disorders these are the various types of uh, uh, insomnia so correct correct ramesh is better we understand this is the non rem sleep disorders these are the rem sleep disorders so non rem sleep disorders are where your most common obstructive sleep apnea narcolepsy obesity hypoventilation syndrome cataplexy all these fall there rem sleep disorders are the behavioral disorders i have shown you multiple videos where there is a neurologist involvement because you you if the patient has associated snoring sleep apnea cpap plays a role otherwise the medications work in so as you said insomnia they are the psychiatric group of sleep disorders where the psychiatrist plays and where there are obstructive problems because doing before polysomnography you do certain prerequisite examinations and ent person will play a part so it's a disease of multi diagnostic seeing the way you have ILD, you are having a multi-diagnostic system and multi-diagnostic team. Similarly, the sleep disorder is also involving multiple specialties when you are addressing this issue. Very nice. So, coming to the sleep apnea. So, what is this sleep apnea? What is its so incidence and how it happens, Doctor Sora? Yes, sir. So, uh, basically, obstructive sleep apnea, as we all know. is uh, obstruction in our airways so uh, before i going to define the obstructive sleep apnea i think uh, uh, will come to know about various indexes indices uh, which we use uh, in the obstruction of sleep apnea definition so uh, basically obstructive sleep apnea is occurrence of an average five or more episodes of obstructive respiratory events per hour of sleep with either sleep related symptoms or comorbidities or more than 15 such episodes without any sleep related symptoms or comorbidities so uh, and where is obstructive sleep apnea syndrome is defined as osc associated with daytime symptoms most often uh, excessive sleepiness so um, uh, uh, obstructive sleep apnea definition as uh, given is in osa guideline also whatever whatever i am telling you is the definition of obstructive sleep apnea as well as uh, uh, if we see the incidence so incidence is also more in the male population that is almost 2.4 to 4.96% of the male population is having this problem whereas in female population it is 1 to 2% of the population which has this problem so uh, uh, yes sir this is the definition and the incidence if we look up correct, upon correct what is the pathogenesis how it happens so uh, pathogenesis uh, uh, we have uh, various mechanism uh, which is uh, related with our upper airway like we all know our upper airway which is uh, started from the posterior part of our nares from there uh, it goes to the larynx that is the upper airway so upper airway is a, a basically a compliant tube therefore it is subject to collapse so uh, osc is caused by soft tissue collapse in the pharynx uh, so there are uh, two kinds of pressure like transmural pressure is the difference between intraluminal pressure and the surrounding tissue pressure so when the, this transmural pressure decreases the cross section area of the pharynx decreases so if this pressure passes a critical point the pharyngeal closing pressure is reached so exceeding pharyngeal critical pressure causes tissue collapsing inward and the airway is obstructed so the, this is the basic pathophysiology until uh, forces uh, changes transmural pressure to a net tissue force that is less than the this critical pressure the air vents remains obstructed so uh, uh, our airway uh, the pathophysiology the basic pathophysiology uh, which we see in osa uh, depends on this correct correct saurabh the way when the patient comes to the clinic he asks you one question what happens the way the you have it described is very nice i'm just going to simplify it patient when he comes to you 
you are going to tell him this is a soft tube like you have a watering when you are giving the the watering of the garden there is a pipe there so there is a pipe which collapses the moment the water comes and it 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 inflates and it deflates the airway i have shown you the beautiful photographs in my talk that photograph you keep in your clinic in front of you tell him very clearly the air is passing normally through these tubes and when there is a collapse of the airway the tone of the muscles of the posterior part of the tongue and the soft palate goes down it closes and when it closes it is apnea when it is partially closing it is snoring and when the snoring is happening and when the apnea is happening you are asking the wife whether he gets up in sleep snoring or ye haan ji sir kharate aa rahe hain suddenly kharate stops and he gets a jhatka <laughs> right she says yes this happens this is apnea right so you know the patient knows he has an apnea and the doctor understand is convinced that yes my doctor knows that this is the problem which you have so this is very very clear what you have described is very nicely when you are sitting in a clinic in a simple way keep that photograph in front of you and explain them this is what happens because now we are coming for before coming for the how we diagnose there are terms which are used when you are doing a polysomnography so the definition of apnea definition of hypoapnea apnea hypoapnea index so i will and reras so i will request dr shivani to please throw a light on these definitions what is ahi hypoapnea and reras and and there is a question in the chat box regarding reras that what time reras take to convert into obstructive sleep apnea so sir i think you uh, briefly touched upon these definitions i would still quickly like to revise so ahi is basically the average of the number of apneas and hypoapneas that are occurring throughout the night uh, so when we talk about apnea it is basically complete cessation of breathing for at least a minimum of 10 seconds or more and uh, when we talk about hypoapneas it is actually reduction in the flow uh, by almost uh, equal to or more than 30% for at least uh, 10 or more seconds associated with the uh, desaturation of 3% or more so that's apnea and hypoapnea and ahi for you and uh, when we are talking about reras it is basically just uh increased respiratory effort without any associated apnea or hypoapnea which lasts for at least uh, a minimum of 10 seconds or more and hence leads to eventually a arousal followed by the entire event so that's what rera is so uh, talking about conversion of rera to sleep apnea i think basically when we talk about rera we look at the respiratory disturbance index because re when rera is happening it is basically disturbing a person's sleep leading to micro arousals or arousals hence making it difficult to for the person to go into deep sleep so however even if they're not actually having apneas or hypoapneas but their uh, quality of sleep is actually not adequate i'm explaining in very layman terms here so be and um, hence they would actually come to you even after even though there are no apneas or hypoapneas but the patient will still complain of excessive daytime sleepiness sleep inertia uh, disturb nighttime sleep they would still be waking up to go to the washroom or uh, drinking water intermittently or tossing and turning in bed uh, so these are basically the complaints that they usually come to you even though when you see the sleep study there basically no apneas or hypoapneas per se but there are a lot of uh, reras so dr shivani when you see a lot of reras without desaturation what you call it we upper call it respiratory upper syndrome. syndrome right so this is uars this is how we define uars when you have more than five reras without any desaturation having yes. any apnea evidence this is what is uars so one of the person in audience is asking how this is one of the findings in polysomnography and you relate reras when there are no apneas there is no desaturation it is upper airway resistant syndrome <laughs> wonderful so so uh, what is central sleep apnea 
and its causes, Dr. Khan? Uh, central sleep apnea is when your brain fails to transmit signals to the uh, posterior pharyngeal wall, the muscles of the posterior pharyngeal wall. That's basically what's happening. And uh, also, they, or the sub corresponding, you will have periods of high intensity breathing and period of low intensity breathing also in these patients. So what are the causes which normally? So you have to think of central causes like patients with chronic heart failure, patients with strokes, and also your patients with uh, metabolic encephalopathy, or especially uremic encephalopathy, which you're going to see in your chronic end-stage renal diseases. These are the three in which you're going to see very commonly in your uh, practice. The other patients can be, we don't see too many of these, but you can see it in patients with overdose of benzodiazepines or morphine or any drug uh, uh, overdose. And then you will also see it in patients in certain high altitudes. If you practice uh, like in the army or in high altitudes, like uh, Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, you can see it in high altitude periodic breathing. So these patients, most of the time, you're going to have a pattern of uh, uh, crescendo, decrescendo kind of breathing, which you will see in, uh, which is a characteristic of chain strokes breathing. So these are the kind of patients that you have to uh, practically uh, see. And the other thing is, uh, I haven't seen too many of that is, also, your patients who you've diagnosed with OSA, you can get treatment emergent central sleep apnea. Uh, this is a very difficult topic to touch on. Uh, so it needs more depth, needs more practical application. But uh, th th just the point here is that uh, when you put a patient on, uh, you'll see this mostly in your patients with BiPAP. When you put them on uh, fixed BiPAP pressures, you need to keep following them up, doing regular follow-up, say, uh, sleep, uh, sleep uh, polysomnograms. So you make sure that their central apnea numbers don't start rising there. Events don't start increasing. So you need to be very careful about that. Um, so these are the main uh, causes. So thank you. Correct, Carl. This is what we are going to discuss when we are coming, when you are doing a manual CPAP titration and an auto CPAP titration. When you know you are treating predominantly obstructive sleep apnea, you give him a CPAP, still he has the problem, persistence of problem. You look back, patient may be having a central sleep apnea. Do the manual titration. You are able to take away the apnea, central apnea, but still the emerge, they, they keep on emerging, as you said. This is what is a terminology for complex sleep apnea, right? A science which is a raw area, total raw area, it's very, very important as you touched upon. That is what is called as a complex sleep apnea. And sleep science is a very, very complex sleep science. Very nice. And when you are treating these central sleep apneas, CPAP not helping, then as you said, you have the NIVs like BiPAP with ST mode, then you have adaptive servo ventilators, you have certain medicines available like acetazolamide, they, they help your patient to sort out the issues. So, so after knowing and touching about the central mixed and, and the complex sleep apnea, I'm coming back to Dr. Ramesh. What are the symptoms of OSA and when the patient should contact to the doctor? Sir, uh, every snorer doesn't have uh, obstructive sleep apnea, but uh, snoring should not be uh, 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 neglected. If uh, it is followed by loud snoring with uh, symptoms of uh, morning headache, sore throat, uh, sleep is, uh, uh, it, it disturbs the accompanying person's uh, sleep with uh, high blood pressures and uh, uh, more than five, uh, five, uh, five times this sleep is disturbed and he is having apnea in, 20, uh, in sleeping hours. These are the symptoms of obstructive sleep apnea. So these are the classical symptoms of sleep apnea when the patient is supposed to come to the doctor and for which we have to have an awareness drive. Like you, you have a smoking cessation, right? People are not aware of what I do, what I practice when I go to the schools 
through my pulmonary foundation we we go to the school and show them a play card to the children whose parents are smokers please go and show to your parents dad i want to live more with you for me please stop smoking similarly to so this is such an emotional message the the parents are thinking now differently to quit smoking similarly the awareness program through these societies about snoring and sleep apnea has to be there so that you go take lectures in the general public make them aware of how dangerous the disease is and it is treatable it is not that it is not treatable so it's a very very important to recognize the symptoms as dr ramesh has said so coming to saurabh saurabh there are scoring yes. like we, we we heard long way back ess snoring in 90s then came stop bang then came the berlin scoring of detecting and confirming from the history that patient is a sleep apnea what i am going i am going towards diagnosis i know the symptoms sir ramesh has told now you tell me these questionnaires are one by one but they are difficult to follow which one is the best which you can just talk to the patient and you fix that yes this patient is fit, fitting into my patient of sleep apnea and i proceed with him so uh, there are different scores sir, to uh, to know to screen the osa patients so as you discussed the fos sleepiness scale uh, which is uh, one of the most commonly used scales it is very simple self administered measurement of sleep propensity basically uh, this is for uh, excessive daytime sleepiness which is the one of the most common and debilitating symptom uh because it reduces quality of life impaired daytime performance so uh, excessive daytime sleepiness is most frequently assessed by a sleep uh, physicians using this scale that is apoch sleepiness scale so uh in contrast to just feeling tired how likely you are doze off or fall asleep asleep uh in which situations so this scale comprises of all these things so this refers to uh your uh, usual life in recent times even if you have not done done some these things recently like uh, uh, this fs sleeping score is having score like 0 1 2 3 0 is for uh, you would never doze one is for slight chance of dozing two is for moderate chance of dozing and three is for high chance of dozing and according to uh, this score patient there are different situations in this scale. like sitting and reading so what is the chances of dozing so 0 1 2 3 has to score so the uh, like similar like, similarly like sitting in reading watching tv sitting in active in public places as a passenger in a car you are traveling you are driving lying down for the rest in the afternoon sitting or talking to someone so each and every con, uh, condition has to be uh, given some score from 0 to 3 and then we uh, calculate uh, this uh, number and if it is more than 10 then if what sleepiness scale is more than 10 then it is defined as excessive daytime sleepiness as a sensitivity and it has a very good sensitivity uh, like uh, almost 50% and specificity of 80% for diagnosing the predicting the osa so uh, the uh, this is the scale which we use for a, uh, daytime sleepiness uh, second scale uh, is the berlin questionnaire so berlin questionnaire is again having three categories like uh, category 1 is having questions are about snoring with five questions it is having two to five multiple choice options and category 2 includes excessive daytime sleepiness which are the most common symptoms like snoring and excessive daytime sleepiness so again the four or more multiple choice questions were given and category 3 is having bmi and blood pressure so these are the three categories in the berlin score so this berlin score was uh, actually modified Uh, uh, at aims by aims new delhi in 2006 so they have modified it uh, for the developing countries like they have changed them some questions uh, in uh, in this categories so uh, both uh, the berlin questionnaire and modified berlin questionnaire are very good uh, sensitivity and specificity for screening the ovc and the third one is stop bang so stop bang is basically the snoring 
डे टाइम टायर्डनेस ऑब्जर्व एपनिया हाई ब्लड प्रेशर बी एम आई एज नेक्स सर्कम्फरेंस एंड जेंडर सो दीज आर पॉइंट आर इंक्लूडेड लाइक नेक्स सर्फरेंस नेक् सर्कम्फरेंस वर टेकन फॉर फीमेल्स इट इज मोर देन सेवेंटीन इंचेस फॉर मेल्स इट इज मोर देन सिक्सटीन इंचेस बी एम आई मोर देन और इक्वल टू थर्टी वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस एंड मोडिफाई मालम पट्टी स्कोर थ्री और फोर so these are the different points which we have taken to screen the uh, patients of osa correct saurav i think you have explained very nicely but we find very comfortable ess scoring and you you have the pads ready in your clinic give the patient and give them a proforma whenever we are doing a sleep disorder clinic so there are set questions which are taken by our dm uh, the 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 dnb students and give them an es score he ticks off the moment the paper is on your table you know he is a candidate i am going to talk about sleep and sleep apnea this is what i feel personally but there are people who are comfortable with bank there are people who are comfortable with the 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 berlin questionnaire right but i find in my practice ess is very very comfortable and i i think you you younger generation will try to adapt to the system whatever you are comfortable with that's very nice now shivani what are the risk factors for obstructive sleep apnea that's very very important before we come on the diagnosis i will definitely tell the audience the kind of a discussion we are doing is all practical more or less practical which will help this was what the aim of cci is and this will help the clinician in their practice lot of questions which are pouring in i am sure you are going to get the answer when i am going to close but i will definitely have 10 minutes and i will stop this discussion and address one by one question if any question is unanswered yes we will sort it out so what do you think are the risk factors for osa shivani sir i think we've already discussed the common risk factors like of course uh, first and foremost comes obesity and uh, we've also discussed the airway abnormalities like adenotonsillar hypertrophy or a poor malampatti score of 3 uh, or 4 uh, we've all, uh, apart from that there is of course a very high uh, hereditary preponderance it probably runs in the families and uh, other than that the common diseases that we actually see in our opds like diabetes hypertension hypertension being very common especially resistant hypertensives have a, a incidence of almost 89 to 90% of patients with resistant hypertension have actually uh, suffering from o, uh, obstructive sleep apnea and once we cure uh, address that their hypertension also responds to medication and so does even essential hypertension or uh, almost 40 to 50% of patients with essential hypertension will actually have uh, obstructive sleep apnea and vice versa so that's a very strong uh, correlation there apart from all those things there is of course uh, um, diabetes which uh, actually we see very very commonly in our indian setup smokers alcoholics are again very very prone to sleep apnea uh then there is uh, we've already discussed people who have chronic nasal congestion because of rhinitis or sinusitis or whatever reason so then uh, also patients of uh, chronic kidney diseases or patients of uh, uh, left ventricular dysfunction are again extremely common to commonly known to have sleep apnea so uh, and of course the male gender or post menopausal women are also more prone so premenopausal women are probably hormonally a little bit more uh, less in uh, commonly involved to have uh, sleep apnea very nice shivani we have enough evidence there are so many rcts and there are so many papers directly leading to the causes precipitating diabetes cardiac failures hypertension there is enough data to correlate but sleep apnea is not the direct cause for hypertension for diabetes for cardiac failure it is the contributory factor to precipitate this so when you address this issue as you correctly said you are in a better position to control blood pressure control diabetes and control hypertension so it is very well evidence there are lot of papers in the literature 
since it is a panel discussion so you can always google sleep apnea cvs you will get all plethora of papers related to hypertension cardiac failure and all cardiac arrhythmias cardiac events few are fully evidenced and hypertension is very well correlated you are treating sleep apnea you are helping the patient to control blood pressure very nicely car how we diagnose what is the gold standard and how we diagnose uh, sleep apnea uh, the gold standard for uh, diagnosing sleep apnea is you need to do a polysomnogram that's the gold standard uh, there are three methods that we can uh, uh utilize uh in our practice the first is a level 3 study and this is the most basic all you're looking at when you do a level 3 study or a home study is that you're checking the patient's oxygen saturation levels and you're checking their heart rate so you are mapping it on a baseline and then after that you're looking at it during uh during the night you get a chart so what happens is when a patient is having a an event where it's either uh, apnea or hypopnea you'll see that the oxygen saturation falls by more than 3% and correspondingly just after that you'll see the heart rate rising uh, over the baseline um, so these are the this is the simple way on a level 3 study you can and you'll find these uh, events repeatedly um, at certain in, in intervals so that's how you know that this is a level 3 study then when you look at a level 2 study you're basically looking at um the heart rate the oxygen saturation and you're looking at the patient's movements uh thoracic and abdominal movements and uh now this is basically and there'll be a nasal thermistor also so the nasal flow is also there and you will get the data and this will also show you so this is a little more uh advanced to get a little more information but the level 1 study um and there's this assisted and unassisted so basically everyone needs to just know level 1 is an institutional study you have seven channels so basically you're going to have uh, as i have said in the earlier ones you'll have heart rate monitoring saturation monitoring thoracic and abdominal movement monitoring and then you'll have the flow monitoring using uh, by the nasal thermistor and then you'll have uh, electric and uh, electroencephalogram electrooculogram and electromyogram which is on the chin typically and the additional probe can be uh, on the finger uh, on the big toe uh, or on the thumb for restless leg but preferably it's always the lower limb uh, so this is the level 1 study which is and you have you can have your ecg leads on top of that and other things you can also piggy back on but the level 1 is institutional and it's also generally typically having a video recording whether the Two and three uh, le uh, uh, level, they do not have that uh, in-depth monitoring. So that's the basic thing in a nutshell. Correct, Carl. The level one is fully attended polysomnography. Level two is also attended with the PDX, but yes, without video recording, you you can do it. Three and four are the basic studies which are totally unmonitored and unattended. if we from cci should encourage should not so this is a matter of debate but i'll share my experience since in indian continent we practice everything we practice interventional pulmonology we practice thoracoscopy we practice basic of respiratory medicine from asthma copd ild tuberculosis and we practice sleep medicine so sleep is a full science when i was in sydney with Ra, in colin sullivan he had a full fledged sleep disorder clinic with 16 beds of sleep studies round the round the nights full always and and still he is alive he was around 50 55 at that time and there used to be a sleep disorder clinics you have the the what you call a dictaphone things are done explained only only and only the sleep is practice how it is practiced dedicatedly i am going to ask you you are doing a two night protocol or you are doing a split protocol what are you practicing sir i initially tried to uh, do two two night protocol as per the guidelines but it just was not uh, patients were not uh, converting they were just dropping out of the study so i eventually moved to a split night uh 
and then I only do uh, the two night protocol in patients who have uh, um, central sleep apneas or who have uh, um, who are admitted in neurological or cardiac failure. So they get the their anyway prolonged admission. So they undergo the two night study, but for on an OPD basis, I do split night. So that's the where I'm getting the most compliance and conversions. Otherwise, people are just not willing to. Uh, they don't have the patience now, Ajkal, sir. They want instant results. Uh, they think it, it like you're doing an X-ray or a scan within a couple. They don't have the patience to wait two nights also. So that's what uh, the practice is. Correct, Carl. It is cumbersome. It is taxing. And it is costing also to the patient. So most of us are practicing the split night protocol. What do you do? You do the manual titration or you put after half of the night, the technician goes to sleep. The specialist goes to sleep and he's on auto CPAP titration mode. Forget about all those apneas. Morning report is downloaded, given to the patient. This is what you practice or you are into that laborious job. I am talking a bitter truth now. Be truthful that we are doing a manual titration, which makes a chest specialist sit and do in the middle of the night a manual titration to take away the stent take away the sleep apneas and take away the snoring fast then obstructive apneas then central apneas and detecting that patient is not a complex apnea tell me honestly what you people do put him on auto cpap technicians yes stop. everybody so uh, majority of the patients yes sir majority these are real practical problems it's very difficult uh, when you're in practice and uh, uh, like you said, it's very challenging. You're in practice, you're, try, you're new, you're fresh graduate, you're trying to do everything as per your teachers, as per protocol. But when you actually try to put it on the ground, it's a total different reality. You so miss patient, and lose a lot of patients. So, so, Carl, the patients are not in a hurry. Patients don't have the patience. We also yes. don't have patience. We doctors also don't have a patience because when a police somnograph you have to read in the beginning, it needs, believe it, two and a half to three yes. hours of yes. epoch of the whole night recording. You become tuned. The way you see that ECG, you open and things are visible. Yes, yes. Similarly, you get tuned and trained. You are just entering. The epochs are changing. Your eyes are so tuned, picking, picking up apneas, hypoapneas. Yes. Yes. This is what 1997, the sleep recording was to be done in the morning rounds. Only the reporting of the PSGs is to be seen and discussed. This is what I say. It is very challenging. Yes. It is yes. not patients don't have a patience. We pulmonologists, my younger generation too, has no patience. They have no time. They want everything instant and everybody in the country is an interventional pulmonologist and everybody yes. is not a special. Good. Very nice. So, so. What before you switch on to the polysomnography, what examinations you are to do, whether I should do or before doing PSG, patient can be all right for sleep apnea. This is I will like Ramesh to please answer. Sir, before uh, doing uh, polysomnography, it is very important to classify whether patient is having obstructive sleep apnea syndrome or central uh, sleep apnea syndrome. Because in central sleep apnea is uh, due to a uh, few neurological uh, disorders and obstructive sleep apnea is having a different uh, entirety. So uh, thorough clinical examination is very important which includes ENT examination where uh, uh, we, should, we should rule out the, whether patient is having adenoids or he is having a, a debated nasal septum then radiological examination is very important. Whether patient is having underlying comorbidities like uh, uh, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, or whether patient is uh, uh, a chronic alcoholic or he is a uh, chronic drug addictor, then uh, whether, whether there is any family history of uh, sleep apnea. And uh, old age is also very important because uh, as the ad uh, age advances, the chances of uh, uh, obstructive sleep apnea goes uh, 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 at high level. So uh, these are the various factors 
so it should be checked or it should be ruled out before being polysomnography so correct saurabh i am skipping off because it is already 9:15 you need to stick to the time and there are so many still still i i i had i had formulated so much of discussion because i am seeing in the chat box there are questions which which i must answer honestly before coming back to the panel discussion so i am going to take up one by one if we have answered we will continue so so the, 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 there is a question anybody wants to answer is welcome will raise his finger so what are the problems in cpap now before coming to the problems i will i will ask ramesh to tell the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea before i take up i think that will be nice so ramesh what are what is the gold standard and what is the general treatment of sleep apnea sir uh, uh, what uh, treatment of uh, sleep apnea uh, medical medical uh, management and surgical uh, management these are the various options for the uh, sleep apnea in medical management first of all we have to categorize whether it is a uh, central sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea and the options uh, 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 in medical management uh, there are very uh, few drugs like uh, already we have discussed about the uh, these drugs and uh, 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 non invasive uh, these uh, cpap bipap or uh, auto adjusted uh, positive airway pressures these are the various options and in surgical management uh, correction of uh, these uh, pharyngeal airways then correction of mandible there are various surgical options are available correct ramesh we have gold standard cpap if this magic box fails we have surgical and non surgical options and since the program is expensive in the beginning when i put down a board in 1997 the treatment for snoring karate pan shop in front of my clinic walked in sir mere ko bahut sare kharate aate hain right so it was very simple to give him i said bhai tum 10 rupaye ki tennis ball lo isko stitch karo apne pajama mein and you sleep so 10 rupees treatment for sleep apnea also helps to the patient if you put that tennis ball in pajama he will never be able to lie straight at least it will sort out his issue of getting so many frequent apneas so the same thing which i have shown you in my talk is a now electronic tennis ball it is a magnetic strap you just put it the moment patient is having an apnea it vibrates it vibrates you are awakened from the sleep and and you are awake again snoring and sleep apnea goes away but gold standard is cpap we have the surgical non surgical i have already enumerated patient says how this helps very important it is a vacuum cleaner modified vacuum cleaner you put bloody pipe on the back of the vacuum cleaner it's a blower so basically it is a blower with the computerized chip and you are able to fix a pressure 10 cm 12 cm 13 cm whatever is your titration pressure and it becomes a cpap and money is being minted by virtue of this machine otherwise the kind of a price has been kept is disproportionate and that is an inhibitory factors for your patients to buy cpap and how many percentage of patients use really cpap you please explain me any one of you telling me sir i have recommended this percentage of the patient and this much have accepted the cpap and they are continuing cpap can anybody put down his hands and tell me about this discussion that your so many patients are cpap you are explaining acceptability and continuing on cpap okay i will continue with this let me tell yes yes shivani yes sir i think the compliance is really poor and actually when international data shows that compliance at 6 months 1 year it eventually keeps on dropping so at the end of 6 months there are hardly 30 to 40% patients in the international data who are actually still continuing to use cpap but i think when it comes to indian data 
the number is even less so they may just mm. take it for trial for a month or a few weeks or at max two months but after that uh, they will drop off so i think there would be hardly 10 to 15% of our patients who genuinely stick to um, cpap no matter what the magnitude of their problem is correct shivani in last 25 years nothing has changed except the practice of sleep medicine from the quality has deteriorated drastically right this is an inner thought of the pulmonary physicians physicians ent specialists and gps who are all jump into the sleep up you know what i am going to talk right yes the acceptability when you are discussing when you are doing a sleep study let me submit to you i had a first sleep lab costing 2 to 3 lakhs in 1996 those auto set systems are now museum in bokam hills resmed factory where i was trained under colin sullivan i have been visiting two three times bokam hills and the resmed factory you are young you want also like you that i have invested so much i must do the sleep and this and this now you you started doing kisi bhi keemat pe sara sleep to karna hi hai we must do sleep study you did it next day you are opening a discussion about the cpap costing 40000 1996 40000 2021 40000 you can imagine the the pressure on the patient and one day patient came and told me sir mere paas to paise the nahi that time the charges were hardly 3000 or 4000 for doing a polysomnography or a sleep study mm-hmm. but we had a level three at the time imagine he says sir mere paas paise hai nahi for cpap इस स्टडी की रिपोर्ट का मैं क्या करूंगा दैट वॉज द डे माई प्रैक्टिस चेंज आई एम टेलिंग यू ऑनेस्टली वी टॉक अबाउट द सी पैप फास्ट वी टॉक इट्स इफेक्ट फास्ट वी सी दैट दैट यू आर गोइंग टू यूज इट एंड देन वी डू अ पोलिसोनोग्राफी नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड इन स्पाइट ऑफ ऑल दिस द यूजेज ऑफ सी पैप कंप्लायंस ऑफ सी पैप इज नॉट मोर देन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट इट वॉज ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स बिफोर एंड इट इज स्टिल टूडे सो वट आई वॉन्ट टू से the sleep medicine practice has deteriorated over a period of years rather than improving the institutions like cci has to take initiative to see how things should be better because since seminar has been given to me is it will take two or three episodes i can put it i mm. used to run episodes on shakti tv so so mm. i know the sleep so i am coming down now we know the gold standard is a cpap so i am going to take they they the the first question i am going to take is from dr from philips the the, the what are the problems of the cpap from dr puneet right from where he has i think it is uh, dr puneet it is written there the problems of cpap are not with the cpap only you have a machine you have Any one of you wants to answer? Please raise your hand, and and I think please, Shivani. What are the CPAP problems? Please. Ji, sir, I think to begin with, the major problem that the patient faces is a uh, uh, leak because they don't know how to put the mask correctly, or uh, you know, for various reasons. The first problem that they back come back to you is the massive leaks that occur. Apart from that, the common problems that they face is dryness of. the mouth of course claustrophobia because of the mask uh, and uh, the noise that the machine makes so these are the common problems but apart from that occasionally they would also come to you with the water coming into the hose and um, uh, very commonly they also actually come with skin ulcers or erosions so i think these are the common problems that we see uh, in my practice i'm sure i would like to really know what the others face as well shivani very nice interface apart from the machine interface and interface is a mask which patient is going to put on his nose is the most important past right and the whole system pricing is on the mask tell the patient when you are going to buy the machine ask him to show you the best mask which fits in as per his nose design it should not have any leak it should be very soft it should be tolerable he should try it for at least 7 days it doesn't leave any scar on the face no leak no irritation 
very comfortable because that is the portion of this whole set which is going to be on the patient's face. So whenever you are going to have a patient for sleep apnea on CPAP, stress on the quality of the interface. Don't go for the cheapest quality, go for the best quality because that is the portion which patient is going to enjoy. There is another patient, the question is from Ajay Bhatia from Maharashtra, Borivili, West Mumbai. He, he is asking about, I am suffering from sleep apnea disorder, feel very heavy and pain in both the eyes next day. I have done my sleep study and CPAP procedure. My dear, absolutely you are correct. You have done your polysomnography. You please get the auto CPAP, which changes the pressures automatically, has got the C-Flex technology that with inspiration and with the expiration, the press pressure changes, which makes you more comfortable. So that is a kind of a machine you should have. Stick to the guns. I, I understand your problem of still after using CPAP, having heaviness and pain in both the eyes. You please stick to it, have the best interface. Even then, if you are having, then submit yourself for polysomnography attended with manual titration to see that you don't have the central apneas or you don't have the complex apnea, which may be precipitating and you are not able to detect. Alkesh Gujarat from Ahmedabad, what is surgical snoring? Please explain. Surgical snoring. Anybody? Anybody, please keep on raising your hand and uh, uh, keep uh, putting yourself into the system. Well, surgical snoring is no snoring. There is no snoring. There is a surgical treatment for snoring where the CPAP fails, where it is not acceptable. I have enumerated you so many procedures. So it, it, it has to be decided what kind of a problem you are facing and how it has to be addressed. Another question is from Iswaran Muniappan from Tamil Nadu. He is asking about how CPAP is useful. Very, very important to understand. I told you in the beginning, tell them in a simple word, it is an air splint to the airways. You have a pipe in the garden. When you open the water, it inflates, opens up, you stop the water, it deflates. Similarly, CPAP is a positive airway pressure. It opens your tubings. You are not having snoring. You are not having sleep apnea because the whole show is wide. There is no narrow neck and there is no big lungs. So you have the airway open with the air splint. This is what CPAP does. It is exactly as I told you, is, is a vacuum cleaner. You are using as a pressure from the back to clean the dust from the vacuum cleaner. It is with the chip computerized escalated the price to any level I told you 1996 40,000 and 2021 40,000 you can understand the, the the sequence of sleep Mrs. Veena Sharma Himachal Pradesh Palampur I want to know the latest treatment of snoring and sleep apnea Dr. Veena we have already discussed I am sure you know the gold standard is CPAP there is a family who doesn't want CPAP, doesn't want Ganesha in his, in our, or in his bed. So they, they don't want, they don't want, ki tube lagi ho, ye laga ho, I don't want my husband like this in the bed. Then you have the mandibular admonishment devices. They are available. Tongue retainers, they are available. You can opt for the oral airway therapy for sleep apnea. That is again, very latest walking in. Then you have got the hypoglossal nerve stimulation like a pacemaker you get implanted into the chest wall so this is another practical feasible you can go another question is from sunil joshi punjab moga how to distinguish snoring due to obesity or from other causes anybody okay i told you i showed you a beautiful figure that patient walking in thick 
chubby, obese, short neck, comfortably walking, no dyspnea, no problem. You know this patient is going to come for sleep. So obesity and sleep, they are interlinked. They are associated. Obese people have snoring. Obese people have apneas. Provided they don't proceed to obesity, hypoventilation syndrome. We had no time. We have no time because already I am sure I am touching 9.30. Quickly, I am going to go through the questions. There's another plethora of obesity, hypoventilation syndrome. Some other time we will discuss. Another is Ajay Bhatia from Maharashtra, Borivili. I am suffering from sleep disorder problem and feel very heaviness and pain. I think I have, I have answered this. Ashish Sina from Delhi. Are chances of Roa, Rora, Rora being converted to OSA? I think we have already answered. Allergic bronchitis is not related to this webinar, but I think you, if you want a treatment of allergic bronchitis, the, 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 your antihistaminics are, are working well. There is no sneeze without wheeze. You must know this. It's a dictum, single airway, single disease. So yes. when there is you are going to get a wheeze. So rule out your asthma. You don't have an asthma. You treat sneeze and wheeze together. I'm sure your problem will get addressed. The another question is, I have, I think we have answered from Veena Palampur. P.R. Agarwal from Rajasthan, Ajmer. Round the clock, uh, the, the, he says, oh, oh, it has gone up. No, Munida from Puducherry, Pondi, please tell how to interpret a titration PAP report done with an auto CPAP machine. See now, it, it cannot, that's what I, few of the slides I showed, it cannot be taught in a panel discussion how to read the titration, how to read. These are technicalities, how you do PSG, how you do the, the, the polysomnography study, the diagnostic and the treatment protocol studies, you see vanishing apnea, you see everything. So it, it is a full technique, which, which has got three separate lectures for the technique and learning of the sleep. Please tell how to interpret it is done. Round the clock, again, it goes up. I don't know, it's going very fast. Round, okay, I, I come to Nipun Gupta from Uttar Pradesh. How can we differentiate central and obstructive sleep apneas clinically? See, it's very, very difficult. Question is valid. Patients have all kinds of symptoms. It is the polysomnography who will tell you the difference between central apneas and the obstructive sleep apneas. Amit from Jharkhand, Jamshedpur, does thumb sucking in child increases the risk of snoring? Anyone to answer? It has, I don't think it has got any relation with the snoring and the thumb thinking. But yes, these patients become the mouth breathers. So when they become mouth breathers, but if there is no issue, any risk factor, any predisposing factor, it may not lead to snoring. It is not a dictum. Dr. Namisha K. from Telangana, Hyderabad. Hello, sir. When is the follow-up sleep study needed to measure response to PAP therapy? My dear, take home message. Auto CPAPs are available. There is no need to repeat the polysomnography. If you are happy with your CPAP machine, take out the card from the back, give it to the person who is your provider. He will download the report every month, bring to the sleep specialist or your chest specialist, Please, please, please go to the person who is practicing. He reads and he tells you, you are improving and how many hours you are using the machine. How is the complacency data about your machine? You please stick to the CPAP. There is no need to repeat again the polysomnography. You are happy. You can download data of one month, two months, three months. Get it downloaded. Take a printout and everything is written there. This is what is a titration. Hyderabad, how do we step up or step down? Dr. Namisha K. Telangana, how do we step up and step down pressure setting up the PAP therapy? Dr. Namisha, nobody is practicing the manual pressure titration I have told you. All of us are super specialists in all branches. This is all time consuming procedures. So you can come to the institution where the pressures you can attend because at that time there were no workshops no classes, 
but now there are n number of workshops so any time happening sleep if i am conducting a workshop in delhi please do come we are going to give you the live live titration how it is done live uh, the scoring of the sleep how it is done psg how it is done i think attending any workshop nearby area is going to help you and you can find out how these kind of titrations are done manually once used is it lifelong dr preeti shankar from karnataka yes the truth is yes but in the beginning to convince the patient that he starts using it you again are a liar you never tell asthma and asthma to the patient because you know agar isko asthma bata diya ye bhag jayega you learn to say you have asthma on the first go nahi this is asthmatic bronchitis nahi this is allergic bronchitis it is like asthma but telling asthma you are afraid so call spade a spade tell yes you are going to use it lifelong provide it you have lifestyle modifications reduce your weight drastically you are going to improve your apneas are going to improve and there may be chances you get rid of this machine dr zakir hussain from telangana hyderabad what about the news about philips cpap machine that is associated micro aspirations correct now indians are taken for a ride usa crores of dollars have been put on resmed the respironics sorry respironics and they are paying the, the 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 there are filter particles the rubber particles which are getting micronized and coming with the air and causing lung cancer to the patient they are returning all machines in usa i phoned the national sales manager delhi in india i asked him what about the indians nobody is bothered people are so simple we are talk we are talking about sahi shunata tolerance you see in our patients they are so no nobody is bothered and no company is bothered to take that machine they have open a registry i am going to put it to our worthy president and secretary dr dosi and dr krishna site please circulate it the site where they should register for these machines to be returned you are demanding they are giving you the site otherwise when you will take the machines they will say you have not registered so we will not change it or we will not change the rubber so i am going to do this contribution from cci to the all members that you get that site and circulate to your patients i think this charity we must do Threaded not even charity. something like a press note they have issued the x sir not even like an advertorial where right. they say that the patient should, right. should stop using it correct shivani i told him why you are not putting sir we will put in a media we will put in newspaper all bullshit we are taken for a ride i am going to circulate that site the our worthy president and secretary krishna and ravi dosi is going to circulate it you please ask your patient to register your machines on that site and ask them not to use it sleep study report of ahi how do you decide on auto titration of cpap machine or manual titration which sir as we have said manual is the best you need time you need patience question is absolutely all right but majority practices the auto cpap whatever is the report everybody with experience knows the pressure is somewhere between 10 11 or 12 even if you are classical case of sleep apnea you give him an auto cpap that patient is going to improve but psg remains gold standard reason being there are other associated sleep disorders which you are going to miss right so again dr hussain from telangana hyderabad why can't we use nasal mask for mouth breathers if narrowing is reduced by cpap pressure then naturally sir there are the nasal pressure nasal port nasal interface is the best you can have the chin strap when the patient is getting adapted to the nasal cpap you are automatically the patient mouth will become closed the chin strap is available you can use it it helps your patient to close the mouth i think i am through the questions i am i'm sorry if anybody is left discussion is left time is over i think i should we should call it a day because it will be another one hour to finish today's part 
and another part if we start it will be it will will be long way to go so i think i am calling it a day you you have my contact you have through the cci you can put any questions regarding sleep i will be happy to answer through the system and any service i am to there to make the youngsters teach when i do my workshop again it will be through the cci and you will like to know thank you very much my panelist ramesh dr shivani dr mehta dr saurav thank you very much all of you thank you very much thank you sir thank you everyone thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.